there comes a point where the game changes, where it's not just about working hard, it's about working smarter. Business is my game. And so when I see the money coming in, that is my score. Take ownership of it, be a cannibal, and then deliver your checklist and it will, it'll happen. Just, just be yourself. Don't, don't dress it up. Too many people like to talk. And what happens is when you talk, you drown out all the stuff around you. You're listening to The Remote Revolution Show, the show that brings insights from industry experts across the world of digital business, so you too can take your business online, travel the world, and live with freedom. If you're new to the show, the podcast is produced every Tuesday for your enjoyment, and show notes can be found at www.remoterevolutionshow.com. Come back often and feel free to add the show to your favorites in your YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes feeds. If you want to follow us on social media, which you should because we're awesome, join the community by searching for at Remote Fit Pro, where you'll find daily content to help you explore the remote revolution oh yeah and if you want to connect with us individually you can do that too via the links in the show notes now let's get into this week's episode with your hosts james moody and george crawshaw hello welcome back to the remote revolution show today we've got a really exciting episode for you another great interview with two very jolly very hilarious and great guys to actually talk to so you're really going to love this episode Right, these guys are called Leon Bustin and John Chapman. If you don't know who they are together, they're otherwise known as the Lean Machines. Okay, these guys, personal trainers, sports nutritionists, and in this modern world, sometimes known as fitness influencers. All right, and they've built a huge following and business online over the past seven years through putting out free information around all things health and happiness related. So if you've not heard of these guys, make sure you go check them out on YouTube. They've also got a book, Eat Well, Move Better, and Feel Awesome. Okay, they've got a really great message and they've really a really humble approach to business, to life, to their health and fitness. And I hope that you get a lot from this episode. But before we do jump into today's episode, I of course want to make sure that you have heard about the online startup workshop that's happening down in Denia in Spain on the 23rd to the 25th of November. If you've got what it takes to get on a plane and fly to Spain, then you've also got what it takes to build a fully operational online fitness business in a single weekend. Okay, without the tech overwhelm, fear of failure, or how do I get more clients syndrome. We've still got some early bird tickets left and you will receive a 33% discount if you grab one of them spots. Okay, if you've not heard about this event, them spots may well have gone by the time of this episode going out. But if you're listening to episode and it's before the 23rd to the 25th of November, make sure you go to www.remotefitpro.com forward slash Spain dash workshop so that you can go and check out what's going to be going down. We're going to be partnering up with Ben Coomber, Rich Wellington, myself, James and our team are all going to be there and we're going to be delivering information that's going to give you a blueprint that you can take away with you on how to get rock solid in your confidence and transition that into how to successfully close high ticket sales and finally build a marketing system which you can generate consistent streams of clients coming to you coming to your business online in today's world all right myself james rich and ben are going to be taking you through all of this stuff over the space of two days so that you can leave with a blueprint of how to grow your business online. If you want to find out more, make sure you go to remotefitpro.com forward slash Spain dash workshop. That's remotefitpro.com forward slash Spain dash workshop. But that's it from me. Let's get into today's episode and go and see the Lean Machines. All right, welcome the Lean Machines. Welcome to the Remote Revolution Show. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time on a Friday afternoon, coming and joining us. No worries, absolute pleasure. Thanks for having us, gents. We've been, we're looking forward to this, and as we said, it's kind of given us a nice little break between workouts, so thank you. <laughs> absolute pleasure. So, obviously, a lot of people listening uh, will or may or may not have heard of you, but for those that haven't heard of you or maybe haven't heard your story before, I'd love you guys to kind of take things back to the beginning uh, of, of where you began in, guess I guess, your business journey and your fitness journey as well. Yeah, cool. It started a long time ago now. It's going to be, well, when we first... I remember when I was young. <laughs> like, that's so that's was... exactly what we want. <laughs> <laughs> so Leon was a roof tiler. I was a carpenter. Uh, 
good 15 so years ago now, I would presume. Uh, and we both just weren't happy doing what we were doing. Uh, so we decided that we'd just run away and we went traveling <laughs> on our separate journeys uh, and thought that we'd sit on a beach and all our life's mysteries would unravel and we'd finally understand what our calling was. Didn't happen that way. We just got really drunk for a lot. <laughs> about five months. Yeah, pretty much what happened. And then uh, Leon was uh, went before me and came back before me, and he'd started personal training in a gym. Uh, I went away and I came back, and it was between doing the police, joining the police force, and doing fitness, which was something I loved anyway. So I spoke to Leon. I was like, "Do you mind if I do it as well? I don't want to tread on your toes." And he was like, "No, cool." And I was like, "That's kind of cool because uh, th there's this thing called YouTube." Uh, and once we've got all our qualifications and stuff like that, that'll be a really good way for us to kind of help more people and probably get more personal training clients. That's how naive we were about YouTube. We didn't know anything about it then. Like, you didn't, it, it's not just people in your area that watch. You know what I mean, it's people over the world. So the chance of you getting like actual PT clients to come to your gym in Norwich and train with you was, was slim to none. So we basically, uh, Leon kind of progressed up, didn't you? And you went to become fitness manager. Uh, I think we were. I think we were the first two just just PTs in the gym, were we? Um, yeah, I think so. There was a few personal trains. We were the first people who were like full time self employed. We kind of broke the broke the trend of being employed and having that somewhat guaranteed wage because you know it's always good to have something to fall back on. But we just got to the point where we're like, well, are we working for ourselves and progressing our own selves, or are we working our absolute backside off for somebody else? And we kind of got to the point where. I mean, that's why we've been friends for 15 years is that we're both driven people and we also very much know our weaknesses and our weaknesses are working for people. <laughs> we're, too, we're too opinionated and we're too driven on what we're, we're doing. We know what we want to do and how we want to do it and when we want to do it. And that doesn't unfortunately uh, bode very well for an employment yeah. status. So. I, think, I think one of our biggest strengths can also be one of our biggest weaknesses and that's we have an absolute shit ton of energy. So if we have something to focus for and focus on, we'll set it alight. If we haven't got something planned in and we're just wandering through life, we will get so deep in a hole of Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> we'll never be found again. Yeah, things just things just it doesn't run smoothly. Business doesn't run well, and and th and it's just not productive. And obviously, as you know, we, with the way that we do things, and, and we as humans, we like results, and we like to know that we're doing well and we're winning. And if things if you don't put the effort in, or you haven't got something to focus on, naturally, you don't get the results. And then we start to feel a bit bad. So every every so often, when things, you know, you have kind of same with your fitness, you have fits and spouts where you where you smash things and then you step off again. And it's and it's the same thing as as we've kind of your body you never let it get too far away from where you want it to be before you switch stuff back on and get to get to your a game but i think especially what we're doing to think that you can be creative in terms of youtube 24 7 every time you put a video out you can't and you have to take breaks and like you can't be in the best shape of your life all year round it doesn't work that way it goes ups and downs and once you understand that um and you don't beat yourself up about it but you hold yourself accountable and step up when you need to things do run a lot smoother for us anyway yeah and that's basically been the last seven years since we kind of left we we broke the reins of employment we've both been self-employed running the lean machines company as we call it which is strange because it used to just be a youtube hobby finishing finishing our shifts at 10 o'clock waiting for the music to turn out and then filming our videos editing them in the lunch break you know the old grind and then um yeah ever since then we got to the point where it was just it started to make money and we didn't really understand where this money was coming from and what it was was for. And then we had this thing of CPM and you get, you know, signed and all that kind of stuff. And our biggest breakthrough for us was around four years ago where we wrote our first book or published our first book, uh, The Machines Eat Well, Move Better and Feel Awesome. And that gave us the financial stability to basically go take a punt yeah that was exactly what we called it we at this point we were both working with a lot of clients doing our self-employment thing creating content but there's two people in this business and to support two people financially it's obviously double everything and we'd had opportunities and stuff come in where we turned it all down because it didn't fit our ethos and you know the message that we were trying to put out of health we could have made a lot of money very quickly with the wrong brands um, but we've always remained true to what our message is. So there's, you know, you could pull any of our history up from the stuff that we've done and you'll never find anything that we're embarrassed to share. Um, and then we signed our book deal, which gave us the financial stability to go, look, you've got a year. If all goes wrong, we've got our qualifications and we can fall back on it. 
we stopped all of our personal training clients, unfortunately, which was a which was a hard thing for us to do. And then ever since then, we haven't looked back. I think the the personal training clients that was kind of a gradual thing as well. Like we were we had opportunities that you couldn't really turn down to go and experience things and do stuff. And it meant going to London a lot because that's where everything tends to happen. So then you got to the point where you were asking your clients for consistency and you weren't really able to give it to them yourselves. So we cut down our numbers uh, and then we kind of just refined it really. And it just got to the point where the gym changed hands and, and the book deal came out and we were just like, enough's enough we can't keep doing it and we yeah. if we we keep saying a couple of years back we should try and make it work now's the time it either does or it doesn't and if it doesn't it doesn't i'd rather say oh shit it didn't work out and tried than go what if for the rest of my life so how do you guys spend your time today other than sitting in a very small room office right now <laughs> like in between sessions what's the daily life like or let's say a week because that probably gives a better overview today is a, a bit of an odd day um Leon's got uh, his first baby coming in December, and mind you, in, mind you, in February. So we kind of kept that pretty close as well. It wasn't planned. Everyone you goes, right, Leon, uh, Leon, uh, have you finished? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've just got. I think this is the one. It's your turn. Go <laughs> on the walkie talk. <laughs> Oh, strike the iron's hot, uh, but no, that's that's not how it happened. But today is a bit Always of a, in sync. I love it. A bit of a, uh, a freak day. Um, we just come. We just literally just pretty much took the day off. We create a vlog, so we're still working creating content, but it is just to have a little bit of fun, a little bit of play. But our general week normally goes along the line of we have an agenda of some things that we know that we have to get done each week as a staple. Uh, it's normally Leon that will message me on a Sunday night and say, look, this is what we need to get down this week. What can we do together? What can we do individually? How do our diaries look? And we try and do as much stuff together as we can. Um, at least we try and be in as much content together as we can, whether that's Instagrams or whether that's uh, YouTube stuff. And then we can go and edit that separately where we don't need to be together. But we, we do spend a lot of time together. But I think day to day, it really depends. Uh, but we might say, right, we've got a ton of stuff we need to create for YouTube. We've got two vlogs to do this week and a main video. Let's do some brainstorming on Monday morning when we grab a coffee. Let's then go and film one of these videos. Uh, we do a lot of partner workouts on, on Instagram. Let's hit our workout midday and then we can do the partner workouts on at the end of them. And then nighttime, we tend to spend a lot of time with our clients. Actually, before we meet up in the morning, we don't normally meet up till roughly 10 o'clock now because when we get up, we spend the first couple of hours catching up with online clients, looking through their workouts from the last day, giving feedback. And that's something that's been relatively new to us. And it's been my favorite thing we've done this year is to start coaching again because I missed it. I like What we've done is it's always been about helping people. And although we, we, we have the opportunity to help a lot of people on YouTube and you get lovely comments and stuff, you don't get that one-to-one -one feel. You don't. Um, so the way that we do our coaching, we try and keep it as close to face-to-face -to -face as possible, but by, by using the internet. So we Skype a lot with people. We like, we have a kind of, I have ongoing messages with clients. Uh, we have obviously all their training set. We use Fitbot. I don't know if you guys have seen that before an app and they can send it uh, like a, uh, a web page and they can send in videos of their training, their footage, and then we can send videos back with alterations to help them. Because I'd say the one thing that's missing from online, um, online coaching is you don't have that right then, right now to push someone's hips down or say lift your chest. You don't have that. That's the one weakness it is. So you have to try and iron that out after. And it does take a little bit more work to do it that way. You might have to find a different cue. But I think for me, that's that's the one weakness of that. But we just love helping people. And that's, and that's, and that's lovely. And obviously, there's certainly the financial side to it as well. With us both finding out that we had babies coming this year, super exciting. We couldn't just rely on on YouTube and it's spontaneous. You you might get a campaign with a brand coming in here and there. You, you we have to start making real credible uh, kind of income sources, but we also have to do them in a manner of something that we enjoy because we won't do stuff we don't enjoy. Like the reason we do CrossFit is because that's what we enjoy. I, don't, I know there's a stigma to it. Leon used to be one of those people that bagged on it himself and he's quite happy to admit that, but we did a bit of gymnastics. And if tomorrow I find something I enjoy more, then that's what I'll do. Love it, guys. So I just want to walk through this process because people will see you as the influencers, as the guys out there on Instagram and YouTube. So you started off by building this brand, The Lean Machine, which well, I want to get into a little bit later of why you chose that name because I think that's so important and it, it's it, it's just became this thing, right? And everyone knew what it was and they followed you. 
Then you had the book deal, but then how did you monetize off the back of that? What was the process? So off the back of the book, to be completely honest, that was a that's something again in business. I think you're constantly learning and you're constantly humbled by what you think you know and what you think is going to happen, and then it doesn't really go like that. Um, one of the things that we really learned quickly with the book is that there's what you want to do and what you believe is going to do the best, and then there's what the public are going to buy and what the publishers want. You know, so we were kind of in, in, in no uncertain terms, you know, it wasn't a bad relationship at all. We worked really well together with the publishing team. One thing that we learned massively from the book when we were actually going through the process is the publishers um, told us to put like 150 recipes or 200 recipes. And we we're like, that's way too many recipes in a book. And we must admit when it came out. One of the questions we get asked a lot is, oh, oh, is there more recipes? We wish there was more recipes because everyone essentially with a fitness book nowadays, it doesn't matter how good the information is. They want to get to the food yeah. and they want to know what they can cook. So it's like we've done the book and it was an incredible experience, but it was almost like the book was a standalone brand in, in the nicest possible way. It sounds really strange. It was it was an extension of the Lean Machines, but that kind of did its own thing. That went really well. We we're really happy with the response and feedback from it. But we didn't really go, right, okay, so now we're just going to push, push, push on the book because we still had so much other stuff that we were still trying to work on with our Lean Machines brand. Like We class our brand as the the day-to-day -day Instagrams, the YouTube uploads, and all the brand stuff that goes on here. And the book kind of, we'd done our bit with it, we just let it yeah. fly. And then, you know, that was that was kind I of think it. what we did do after the book came out is we, because that was away from online, because online, radio, and TV, they do not cross over. They don't link to each other. Just like we did some stuff on The Apprentice re in the past and been on TV for other stuff, that doesn't cross over to get you more views or, or subscribers. It doesn't. It just gets you probably become slightly more maybe recognized or of a household name, if that, is, if that is the right thing to say. But one thing we did do, because the book was the first time that we'd really been out there for maybe the generation and the people that don't really use the internet, we did start to mold the way we put our content out on the way we kind of um, section off our content around the book. So our playlist on YouTube became Eat Well for Nutrition, Move Better for Training Stuff, and Feel Awesome for more kind of day-to-day -day blog stuff. So we started to uh, we started to kind of bring that out a bit more. So it became more kind of wholesome across all of our stuff. So anyone that may have found us from the book can still get that kind of vibe if they came over to our channel or something else. And it kind of just all kind of merged together. Um, but like Leon said, that was a real standalone thing. And I think for a long time, like I'll put my hand up and say I'm not a particularly good business person. I never have been. Like I just do. I've just kind of, and it's only now since babies come along or coming along that I've had to step it up and really take control. I've, I've, I mean, I've read a few business books and stuff like that, but it's not my passion. My passion is fitness and helping people. My passion isn't business, like, and 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 so I don't put as much time into that. And I'm not afraid to admit that. Uh, and sure, I probably would have made a lot more money in my life if I was if I was more equipped in that area. Um, but again, money's really important, but it's not my primary driver in life either. Um, it, and it's actually something that gives me a bit of anxiety. Like I don't even look at our bank balance. Leon and stuff does that because I, I it just it just plays on my mind, and it's not something that I want to spend a huge time th thinking about. I think a lot of that came from um, when I was growing up. It was my mum by herself. Kind of dad went and did his thing. We didn't get on with him. Blah blah blah. So it was all kind of. It was on like a defensive my kind of mindset, and it was like money's hard to get. We have to work for everything. So as a as a result, I grew up with like this hyper, this kind of hyper perspective of money. Like it's it's super important. It's really hard to get, and if you haven't got it, it's, it's panic time. And it's not that case at all. And then like Leon's much more kind of liberal with it and relaxed, and he understands that it's a flow in and out. Um, so he kind of keeps an eye on that more than me. Love like numbers. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big numbers man. Like for me, I'm I'm the type of person who. I can pretty much, off the top of my head, I pretty much know how much the company has to make if it was to be day to day, week to week, month to month, and year to year for the company to make its basics. You know, that's a, a real, real simple, simple thing that I make sure that I cover um, because it's just good for me. I'm a maths person. I like it. I like to know what that I have to do something every single day that is going to actively work towards that number. Even if it chips away, you sell one product, you interact with 10 people that's going to potentially cross over to something in the future. So one thing that I've done with John is like, because he doesn't like 
big numbers and monthlies and yearlies. I broke it down to every single day. It was something like, right, so every single day, you've essentially got to do something that will earn you £4.50 in the long run as a business person, you know, and that really works with him. Whereas, like, for me, I like to get it all down in numbers, know what I have to do every single month to make sure that we're moving forward. It never works like that with a self-employed, you know, self-employment status with brand opportunities and stuff that don't come in every single day or month. But that's one of the reasons that I started to do it like that, because you've got to know, I think in business, you've got to know what your strengths and weaknesses are. John knows that his is worrying about money and that kind of stuff. So I do it. And my weakness is being creative sometimes. Sometimes I'm just like, ah, yeah, just chuck it up. It'll be fine. And John's like, that's just not good enough. You know, and that's where I think it balances out. But for me with business, the biggest number one is just covering the bases. Then everything else, you know, for me, I could work an extra 20, 30 hours a week quite comfortably. I know I could, but I know damn well that I wouldn't be happy doing it for what the financial reward would be. I used to do personal training 50, 55 hours a yeah. week, earning an absolute ton of money as a coach. But I, 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 <laughs> I aged so much in that two to three years that I was doing it. And I'm, I was with my wife that, that I've been with for the last seven years. And I remember in that, that two or three years, I don't think we did anything. Yeah. You know, we literally, there was no, there was no experiences whatsoever. It was me getting up at five o'clock in the morning because my clients wanted to do training before work and after work, Nuts. coming home at 10 o'clock, doing my sessions at lunchtime, living out of a Tupperware box, looking absolutely shredded 24 seven foot. I was in the absolute don, but I never even be, was able to take my top off anywhere other than the gym because I was always in the gym. You know, yeah. it's just miserable. I mean, the thing <laughs> is when you, when you're personal training as well is that you, you really work and you aspire to get all these clients and for a financial thing but when you get there you realize shit this is not a good um it's not That's it's fun. not good it's not a good ratio for your time like because it's not sociable hours people want evenings and they want mornings and we were doing between i think the minimum i was really doing was between 30 clients 30 clients a week and but you get there crack of dawn there'd be no point driving home again because you'd have that one random client that wanted like a one o'clock session so it keeps you at the gym all day um and then you and then you just end up doing an extra session and then you have a bunch of clients coming back to back in the evening one thing that did do though is it gives your life absolute rigidity in terms of schedule so it makes eating and stuff and staying in shape really really bloody easy because you have to make your packed lunch because if you have you don't you haven't got time to eat to eat it so you, you grab it it's there you eat your meals in between your calories are already set bobs your uncle and and that's that it doesn't even become a factor anymore because it's all set out for you um i think that that's kind of a i wouldn't say it's a good thing but i would say that made that easy yeah, you'll realize that there's always a bright side with us, even if there's a negative. Always <laughs> a bright side. <laughs> Absolutely love it, guys. Go on, George, man, because I know you want to get into the finance thing probably because you were smiling away as uh, J John's like, I freaking suck at finances. And Leon's like, that's my jam. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, i got to say, like, I think I think it's so important to have that balance, right? Like me and James are very similar. Like, I'm the numbers guy. James is more the creative guy. Like... What would you say in terms of your business experience? And I'd kind of like you to consider, imagine if you went it alone, right? What would things have been like, John, for you if you didn't have this number numbers guy with you there back in that side of things? Obviously, you'd, you know, you'd have still been passionate, put your content out and all that good stuff. How do you feel that business would have been if you didn't have that element covered for yeah. business? I'd, I'd, st I'd still be kicking ass and I'd be doing grand, but I would be more stressed, more anxious about money. And it's not worth it, man. It's not worth it. Like I'd rather make less money and not be anxious than be anxious and be doing fine because it just feels shit. And like, yeah, it's something that, that we, we've struck up a good balance with and Leon's kind of helped me with quite a bit as well. And it, and it's, I would be fine because I'm good at my job and I'm passionate and I'm always going to have clients. That's not the problem. So the money would always be there, but my, the way I feel about the money wouldn't change if that makes sense. And I'd, st and I'd still have times where like, I feel like I've got to do more. Or like I, in the past, I never used to buy myself anything. My money would just, just sit there and it would go on a holiday or something like that. Whereas Leon would come in, he's got some nice new t-shirts on, he's got a bit of this, he's got a bit of that. And that was just that was just the way I was. I was just, I was just tighter than a duck's ass and, <laughs> and just would panic about it quite often when I didn't need to. And that's the real thing about it is it's panicking when you don't need to. And that's, pretty much often what anxiety is to be honest yeah so i want to jump into how you guys actually get paid as influencers because people out there 
a lot of guys think it's like the holy grail and they probably don't see all the fucking work and all the shit that goes in behind it. We'll see an Instagram photo and go, oh, that's a paid ad. That's, that looks easy. Yeah. Yeah, so talk us talk us through the process, especially in the early days when you started to get recognition from brands and, and other people. Talk us through that process of how they actually approach you and how you end up getting paid and what you have to do to fulfill the, the contract, all that kind of stuff. Real early days, there there well, it took us three, four years before there was even a mention of money in that. And to be honest, we didn't even know that it was really a thing back then. It was real early days of YouTube. Um, and things like brands, like supplement companies, hey, do you want to come and hang out with this athlete? Like, yeah, it'd be great to feel. And it's great because they get free content. I suppose you get to meet someone that you, you kind of aspire. But as time starts to progress and you get a bit older, you realize that doesn't pay the bills and you're not really that bothered by it anymore. Um, and as you start to thicken up and you become a bit more savvy than that, you realize and that- And you've got about a hundred pairs of trainers. Yeah, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true. It's true. <laughs> and you realize that your content's worth more than that. And once you start to understand your worth, then you have the balls to ask for it more. And people either say yes or they either say no. And if they want to say no, they'll go for someone normally with less of a following that, that, that was maybe where we were before. And this is one thing I say, there's nothing wrong with that. But what I say to people with fitness is, or with business is never compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter five. Because you can look at people and go, wow, look what they're doing. Yeah, but they've been doing it for 10 years. This is your first time. It happens with content that you create. It's editing skills. It's everything. Like, you, you can't just take a comparison out of the water because you don't know how, how much people have done in the past. Um, and basically, yes, yeah, so they would contact us. Um, and to be honest, actually, I don't, did we do any jobs before we had our agents? Now, for a while, we for the first few years, it was literally just relationships, really nice relationships with um, good sports brands who would give us all the latest kit and all that kind of stuff and invite us into the store, go shopping, do your thing. We're like, absolute balling. <laughs> <laughs> and then sold it on eBay to actually pay yeah, your food bill. Literally thought it was amazing. And, and, and at the time, it was super helpful and really, it, you know, it saved us money. So in, in, in a twisted way, it made us money because I wasn't spending money on trainers every couple of months and all the rest of it. But it then got to the point, as John said, where... First of all, we got introduced to our agents as well, who got to do the business stuff for us. They were the ones going, yeah, but you do realize that this brand is getting a hell of a lot of awareness for free from you posting. Well, like, oh, no, that's all right. You know, that hundred quid pair of trainers. I don't mind. You know, I'm happy. I'm happy. And then when it gets to the point where you've got, like I say, 10, 15 pairs of trainers sitting there and you're giving them to your friends because you haven't got anywhere to put them. And you're, you're not really gaining anything from it apart from really good yeah. karma. And also and then, the, the, the unit price of them is pittance. Yeah, so. so we just got, so that's when we started to understand what advertising was. So that was our first kind of light bulb moment where we're like, not that, not where we wanted everything to be paid because that's just crude, but that's when we just started to understand that it had to be, yeah, it had to be a two way street. So we said, we lost a few brands in the early days where we said, look, if you want us to post these trainers, you're going to have to pay us to do that. They were, you know, didn't really want to do that because this whole paying Instagrammers or YouTubers back then in the UK, they're like, what are you talking about? I only do all my advertising on TV. And then as the the brand started to understand a little bit more and be more educated, in the space and we started to understand and we got our agents involved who do all the money talking it then just slowly started to progress from there so a brand would come into us or they would come into our agents they'd discuss what the campaign was what they wanted in return i.e a youtube video an instagram post an instagram story whatever it may well be and it would cost in an end of the amount of money they had blah 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 and would we be happy to do it um i think our agents have probably aged more than us in the last five years because of the amount of work we've turned down um because again we you'll you'll see from our stuff we won't work with brands that don't fit us either and then it kind of just went from there and it, it's just the same it's like if a i don't know this is a really weird analogy but say you, you go into the shop and you want a chocolate bar and you're not sure you're not sure what chocolate bar you want we're the chocolate bars so each one of these fitness influencers and youtubers and all the rest of it we're all just a, a different chocolate bar on a shelf i knew you and it comes chocolate. To, i love chocolate and the customer basically decides or the brand decides what chocolate bar they want to work with or what the one they they want to eat and then they turn around and they fiddle out all these numbers and contracts and stuff and then we say yeah let's ride off into the the paid ad sunset together and make it happen i think the thing is as well is that Gleam, who look after us, they were the first kind of digital marketing agency of that time. And and the guy that runs it, Dom, was literally going around to brands and explaining how it works. Because basically, they'd done, let's say they cost someone, uh, I don't know, 
whatever kind of company to advertise in between X Factor and something else, thousands of thousands of pounds. They know that there's a decent amount of, of, of audience watching there, but no one can click straight through to purchase. They don't know the age. They don't know the demographic. They don't know anything. They do that on YouTube. And let's say someone, there's people out there that probably get more views than people are watching in the adverts. They can see, they know your demographic. They know that the video is going to be up on their channel for at least maybe six months. They can track everything. So for them, it becomes a much more, more powerful. And it also an absolute fraction of the price of what they'd have to pay to do on main TV. And I think it took brands away a while to crack onto that. And then they went into the side of it's all about viewer views and subscribers. And I think now they've come out of that and realized it's really about the the content that's created, the the backstory of those people and if they fit your brand. Yeah. So like a good example is a couple of years back we we lost a, I think it was a Nike campaign to a, another vlogger that we knew who was probably three times the size of us as a channel and was getting a hell of a lot of views. But this campaign absolutely died because this person didn't work out. <laughs> Whereas like we look at it and we're like, well, if we've now, like back then, it, like John was saying, it was just purely about the viewership. It was about they'll pump money in to to get their stuff seen. But whereas a lot of the way it's working and starting to change now, which is fantastic, is that the brand doesn't necessarily care if it gets a thousand views or a hundred thousand views, as long as that thousand views is has come from 18 to 25 year olds who are predominantly males who who have got a good chance that they're going to be going to the gym based on your content you're watching. And that's that's a lot more of a, a selective advertising and marketing tool for brands that they're now, you know, we get asked more and more questions about our demographic who watches our age group where are they from how long do they averagely watch and stuff like that and how likely are they to click through on things a lot more now and that's that seems quite intrusive but for us is a fantastic tool and it, it means that brands are starting to learn and understand what's best for them as well and because there's nothing worse than us for us than working with a brand getting paid a ton of money to do a brand partnership and they get absolutely nothing from it because that you know that kind of word and negativity spreads just as much as a positive campaign yeah so you got you got to respect your own brand right and your own assets as such because if you go and as you say run a campaign that flops they're going to look at you and they're going to be like why did you guys not deliver and it's like well we weren't a good match and i get you got i bet you guys have been burnt before at, at some point where maybe you didn't have that perfect partnership or you nearly took on a partnership that wasn't quite right because of the money can you talk us through any of those kind of situations which was hard to turn down maybe um i don't think we've had one that's been we haven't done one that we didn't think would fit. I think the hardest one that we've probably done to fit was, I think it was something with Google and it was, and we did it actually around our online coaching and creating content with one of their kind of pixel books. And that's about as far out of the field that we've gone. Like I say, we turned down way more than we do to the point that it's probably a bit foolhardy, but that's why at seven odd years down the road on, road on YouTube, you still have a following. Um, because people still like every time you do something that's so far left field from what you're about, you lose authenticity and you lose respect from your audience. And ultimately, it's your audience that respect the information that you give out. So some, it's like you can't cut your nose off to spite your face. I mean, there's been some things that we've done. That I can't think off the top of my head that haven't worked out as well as we want to, to do. But that wasn't because of the brand that we chose to work with. It was probably the dynamics of maybe they had a producer involved that didn't have the same vision as us. And they yeah. wanted to do it in their manner, whereas we wanted to do it in our manner. Normally, what brands do, the best that we one of my favorite things that we ever had to do was uh, I think it was uh, it was a clothing company came to us and they just said think outside the box that's all we be yourself <laughs> and I was like oh you shouldn't have said that anyway it pretty much ended up with me and Leon like getting naked is pretty much what happened and they loved it so much and it did so well that they use it for their internal marketing in their in their company now which was wicked and I think that's the magic of of, so, of social media is that people that aren't trained in TV and aren't trained in that, they think completely different. Yeah, we don't have to have that, oh, we better not say that. Yeah. Or we better not you think like human beings. That's the thing. Yeah, I, think the, I think the main thing, like any brand partnerships that we've had that haven't gone as well as we'd have liked on both sides would normally come down to trust. And it was more back in the early days where it was a case of hard line advertising and that when people were going from that traditional media space into the digital 
there's it's like we say you know even now you've got digital you've got newspaper you've got tv they're all completely different and even blogs you know blogs are still a completely different factor to something like a newspaper and i think where there was this transitional period where a lot of old school people wanted to do the new school in an old school way and that was where it was really hard you know sometimes we get to a point where like that is just going to look super heavy super silly and massively out of place and it's sometimes you get to that middle point and you're like you know what if you want it just that's you're gonna have to learn from it you know and that sounds brutal but you know business is not just about us learning it's actually about educating as well so sometimes the brands come back and go you know what you, you're right we shouldn't have done it like that and and that was that was more back in the early days whereas now it's a lot easier you know the last few things that we've done have been so so easy and such great collaborations and we've been super proud of them all I know you guys have been alluding to how you had to take over some of the ownership of what you created with your own personal training online and those kind of things. I do want to get into that in a little bit more detail on how you made that transition. But before I do, you were talking about your agent and I'm sure the guys listening are like, well, how do I even get a freaking agent? What was the process of that? Yeah, so my sisters and my brother have all been on YouTube before us and that's kind of where I got the idea from uh, and there was just something they were doing like makeup tutorials like they've all got skills um this is were pretty well known in, in makeup as it was and uh, as a result I think they were like the first people to be signed so it was a natural progression for us it became a, it just became a stepping stone but I think if you're looking for that you should contact look look for the digital marketing agencies there's a lot there's out a there lot, and there's there a lot of like junk email you get like hey can we represent you and from left right and center but just just explore and i would be i would actually say if you don't need one go it alone like go it alone because you know what I mean financially you you keep your commissions and stuff like that um i wouldn't change being with clean they've been amazing they've given us so much support and so much direction and help all the way through and uh i think we we wouldn't be where we are now um in in the kind of online world without them so uh, we've got to say thank you to them for sure um, well, we but, definitely couldn't like especially with the way when we started we definitely couldn't have even broke through in that sense because we were so it was such a new thing we were learning so much whereas like i think now like john said if you don't need them you don't have to worry too much because you know my wife for instance she works in the space and she used to be with gleam and she now works on her own because she's a control freak <laughs> and she'd be happy enough to tell you that and she gets emails every single day you know now that brands are aware and they want to work with influencers and stuff they will contact you directly as well it's just like for us that like every business has got their own strengths and weaknesses and one of the things for us is we like to have people around us who can do the other stuff and look after us make sure that we're not being played for fools at the same time you know and that's what gleam are absolutely fantastic for us so we can just concentrate on what we need to do and they do everything else Nice. No, we touched. Yeah, go on, George, mate. Jump in. <laughs> so I'm so excited you... by these guys. I'm like, this is cool. We've got a duo. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you guys have absolutely nailed your content, right? So this is the thing. So your content has stuck and it's allowed you to obviously reach so many more people, create a business out of it and all that good stuff. And today there's a lot of people, certainly a lot of fitness professionals, because that's the world that we're in, that are creating content to, grind, to try and grow their business, right? What would you say are some of the elements, you know, drop it into three or just riff off your head. What are the key things that you think you did in your content and have continued to do that has made your content stick, become relevant and gets, you know, do so well? Do what other people don't, but it's got to be you. Like you can't fake it. Like, like for whatever reason, like obviously James Smith stands out an absolute mar at the moment because he says what other people don't say, and that's him. That's him. Like if if I was to do that, it wouldn't it wouldn't stick because like, like Joe Wicks. Could... Joe Wicks done the Lean in Fifteen. Joe was one of the first people. Like we we really like Joe. You know the thing is in this industry, something that's really hard is people do not like to see other people do well. And the funny thing oh, is, our, our, in our in our culture, we will support people to a certain point, and then they'll go, "How much? Oh, hang on a minute, I could be doing that." And they will tear people down. And we watched the rise of Joe Wicks with the Lean and Fifteen, and we said the whole time, we're like, "Quality name, it grips you as soon as you hear it, and it's getting people moving." Do I agree with absolutely every meal or every workout style? Do I think it's the holy grail? No. But do, do I think it's got more people moving and thinking about what they're putting in their mouth and training? Yes. And he's he's captured a nation. And yeah. I'm like, how can you rip that down? But it's just, again, like you see other coaches who will turn around and go and make a video 
bagging on his lean and 15. Yeah. I'm like, you're not doing that to, it, to, to build your, yeah. you're doing it to build your business off the back of having to shred someone else down. And it's, it's drama. Yeah, there's a difference from getting notoriety from your skills and the way you do things. And there's a difference in getting notoriety from creating drama. Uh, and stuff that is, isn't yours, really. Um, so I, I think you've got to be different. You've got to come at it with your own niche. Leon and I are very honest, and we're quite happy to talk about stuff that guys normally don't want to talk about. Uh, and we're quite open with our feelings, and I think that breaks down a lot of walls. And now I think that's why we don't get so many keyboard warriors, because I think a lot of the keyboard warriors are, are just angry people, and they, and they just need to be understood a lot of the time. So yeah. once once you put yourself out there, and you're sensitive, and you're like a like an open nerve, like, like we're, I, can't, we're, I can't hit them anymore. No, I'm never worried about it. But we're, we're pretty, we're pretty, we know who we are. We're, we don't really get much, uh, much shit, which we're really lucky for, but it'd be water off a duck's back anyway, because we're confident who we are. And I think, I think that you've got to be thick skinned because the more you get seen, if we have a video that gets 10 times as many views as, as another video, 10 times more crap, there'll be 10 times more crap on it just because it gets seen by more people. That's just part yeah. of life. That's just the way it is. So you have to have a thick skin for sure. You have to be different to everyone else or you can't be different to everyone else because this, this fitness so, is fitness. Yeah, you, calories but you, calories. Have to, <laughs> you have to know what you stand for and you have to do it in your own manner. Yeah. I think is is really important. And then for the third thing, um, you you have to put people first. Like regardless if you're in it for money or which it, everyone is to a certain extent. You've, no got, no, you've got you've, to do free stuff. You know, there's no two ways about it. It's got you've got to do free things. It doesn't matter whether you've got seven or ten branches to your business and only one of them is doing is giving free information. Given whether you go and meet people, whether you have a coffee with them, whether you have YouTube or whatever it may well be or Instagram where they haven't got to pay for every every piece of content that they see I think the biggest thing in the industry now is that a lot of people are constantly worried about making money out of it and you can't you've got to turn around for as much money as you want to make you've got to give away your time as well because it it gives you credibility and it gives you very good karma as well I'm it's really, very good I'm really glad that we came into this and it was never a thing of making money because we didn't really know you could we didn't know. Sure, I knew there was money from CPM, but you need millions of views to make any money from that. And we don't get them. And I never expected us to. It was really just a way, like we were going in the gym and like you'd see someone doing something wrong and you want to approach them. And as soon as you'd approach them, they'd be like, ah, my personal space. And they'd, and, they'd, and you might not see them in the gym the next day. So it was like, well, how can we put something up there, which is completely on other people's terms? They can take it or want it at their own leisure. Um, and and then that's kind of where it stuck. And sure, a lot of the stuff we did at the start was throwing shit at a wall and seeing what stuck, to be honest. That was exactly what we're doing. And we did a lot of stuff we didn't enjoy. And as time progressed, we just kind of found ourselves. Sure, if we started a new channel now, it wouldn't look like ours did at the start. No way. But neither does YouTube. It's completely different now. There's probably hundred times as many people on it now as there was then. So yeah. anyone that wants to start now, it's much more of a saturated market. Um, as well, so that that that's obviously something to take into account. Like if we start again, there's nothing to say that we'd get picked up any more than anyone else because it's so saturated now. But you just have to people people if they believe this is where Joe Wicks and this is where people do well is because they believe in your ethos. Like there's a saying, and I and I'll, and I'll probably butcher it, and it was it was like it was like a, a real quote. Basically, I think it was Martin Luther King who did like a a black rights rally. Uh, it was nearly three, like nearly half the people there were white. It, it's because they believed in what he did. And if people believe in you and your pro and your purpose, then they will support you and they will be part of it. If people, uh, if you haven't got that following, then you're probably not going to last as long. Yeah. yeah. And I, think, I think one final thing I'd add on there as well, which was a learning from myself with business is regardless of whether you're doing it from a, a business place or you're just kind of having fun with it trying and thinking about what you can do imagine it a few years down the line because one of the biggest things that a great piece of information that I got given from why he was never a client he was just the most unassuming guy who used to come to the gym ragged old trackies nicest guy literally he only paid me attention because I remembered his name one thing that I used to do in the early days of business with personal training is make a point of remembering every single person's name who I had contact with every single day you'd be shocked Something as simple as that got gained me 15 or 20 clients. That's You'd great. be shocked. Yeah, connecting and, with people. For yeah, sure. and he came in one day after about two or three years of me greeting him. Hi, Neil, how's it going? What are you up to today? Blah, blah, blah. Every single time, same one-dimensional conversation. I never got past the basics. He rolls up 
And he was like, am I right to park in the disabled? And I was about to say, no, you'll have to move it. And as I looked over his shoulder, it was a Lamborghini Aventador soft top. And I was like, I'm not one to judge, dude, but you don't look <laughs> like, what, what are you doing in that? And he was just like, oh, it's like, um, if you've got time after I've worked out, it's like, I'll sit down and have a coffee with you. And I was just like, I need to know. I was like, I need to know how that happens. And it, it blew my mind because he just never even mentioned business, money, nothing whatsoever. And he said, I'll have a coffee with you. He's like, you've made a point of uh, remembering my name, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I'll give you five minutes. I sat down. He ends up being one of the biggest luxury caravan dealers around in our area and had, and had a massive, massive business. And I said to him, I was like, one sentence. I was like, give me one sentence because of my bit. He'd been watching us. He'd actually been watching what we're doing. He was so into it with business. And I was like, give me one piece of advice. And he's like, I know you're doing it for fun now. He's like, but imagine your business five years down the line and give it a number, give it a value, give it a size. Because if you carry on the way that you are just enjoying it and being humble, that business will be so far out of your reach in five years time that you'll never catch it again. And that's the best piece of advice I've ever, ever been given in business. And I think that's what I would give to anyone who's starting now. That's incredible advice, guys. And I, I want to touch on business a little bit deeper right now because your brand is the thing that stands out to me. And you say that you stayed honest to the brand the entire time. So did you ever sit down together and be like, this is what we stand for. These are our values. These are what we don't agree with. Did you go through that process? And has that changed at all? No, because the brand is direct reflection of Leon and I the reason we get on so well and we're best friends and we've been able to work together all these years our morals and our things are the set and our and the rules we live by are the same um do you know what I mean it's, it's it's people first um it's family first and it's like everything else comes second or third behind that um and the reason that we've been able to work together for so long is because we're honest if one of us has a problem with what the other person says you ask them why they did it uh, and that was that was something I had to work on as well. Myself in particular, I would let stuff build up until I go way over the top with it <laughs> and just and just lose the plot. And then you learn as you get as you get older to just say, "Hey, dude, why did you do that?" And normally there's a completely logical answer to it, or it's just like, you know, I didn't even think. I was like, "All right, well, next time let's just make sure we do it that way." Because one thing here and there isn't the end of the world, unless which you would we would never do. You put something up which is really going to offend people or it's or it's just stupid stupid things like on on things that would end your career which neither of us would do you 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 just trust that person i could not go into a business meeting for the next six months i know that everything leon chose to do would be the same thing that i would pick yeah i um, think we spend more time when it comes to the brand and our morals and educating people we spend more time teaching our agents teaching publicists and people who look after us or brands or anyone else about what our brand is and who yeah. we are rather than like ourselves it's just it's almost like twins you know john is a twin i'm like his third twin <laughs> but you just kind of know it's a converse that was one conversation when it comes to business that we never really had had to have and i think the only time like john said if we ever had to have that conversation it would be because one of us had massively stepped away from our moral code and it had just been detrimental to both of us mm. what would you say yours like 11 out of 10 moment would be so the thing that would really be the icing on the cake in the next, I don't know, three, five, ten years for you guys. Yeah, there could be lots of them. That's amazing. Um, I think this sounds really sad. What do you mean, business or just in general? General, guys. I'm sure it's all tied into one for you guys, right? Like you said, it's your passion is serving people. That's what you love to do. And that's going to be naturally related to business at some level. So, My 11 out of 10 right now would be in a year's time if my partner didn't have to go back to work if she didn't want to and she could spend a lot of time with the baby that would be mine right now yeah i think the the most the closest one which would be personally right now is i am so excited to be a dad um now that i've actually dealt with the situation emotionally and mentally it's been <laughs> such a crazy ride um uh, i'm really really excited that's in december i think that's going to be an 11 out of 10 for me as a as a man and as a husband and to become a father but i think as, as a if i was to look business wise I would, I would just like to say that the business will be in a place where it's still respected just as much as it is now, and I could still carry on doing it just the same as I am now. You know, that's the goal. Is like my, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but I never really want to have to go back to having strict hours. They'll kill me. You know, that's that's a blessing in itself to be able to turn around and have. We have probably 20, 30 hours that are structured each week that yeah. we have to do, but they're not set nine to five, yeah. you know, and that's a very beautiful, fortunate position to be in at 30, two 31 year old men. Well, John, not 30, 31 yet. 30 Don't three, put that on me. 30 and three quarters. I think what 
what's good about us two as well is that we keep each other very down to earth when it comes to stuff like that. Like we don't get like we've been able to do some really awesome things and we appreciate that that is not normal. So when you talk to your friends and you've been on five trips away this year, you don't rub it in the face because for most people, they're lucky if they get away once a year. And that's that's normal. I understand that we're the ones that are not in the norm here. And I think you know, it doesn't matter how who you meet, where you go, you always use your P's and Q's and, and you just don't let yourself run away. And we've been on trips before and you've been there with influencers and, they, and I've seen them be rude to people because they do it often. And it's like it's I'm like get fucking down from there. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, come on, come back down to earth. Like what you're getting to do, regardless if you've done it a lot of times before, is still absolutely amazing. And a lot of people would chop their right ear off to, to be able to do that. And I think it's really important never to forget that because that's what keeps you, that's what keeps you grounded. And that's what keeps you in touch with the normal people. And the normal people are our clients. And we're normal people. Like that, that, that I don't want to make it sound that we're not because we absolutely are. And everything in our, mine and Leon's life is really about our families and our friendships like if you are and you noticed how our 11 moments wasn't hanging out with a celebrity or wasn't a value of money being a millionaire it's, it's, ne <laughs> it's never gonna be that, it's not, that. It's, it's not that like some people it is and that's very that's cool. fine yeah you but know, that's us. very cool to have like i have financial goals and everything like that but my some people think you know when they top business gurus might look at me and go well you've got no drive but it depends what your what your drive is. It, it, what is yeah. your driving factor? You know, for me, it's not making the business bigger and bigger and wider and wider and wider because I know that then that creates more time that I'll have to potentially be away from home. It creates more stresses and people that I have to look after to because I don't trust anyone other than John with my business yeah. because he understands me, understands how to represent our brand more, most effectively. Whereas if I have to go and employ ten people this time next year to go and do that as well, I know what it was like trying to just manage six persons personal trainers and all the crap came down on me if that if, if yeah. old jesse didn't go and clean the treadmill properly you know that causes me stress that and i just, don't need and it, and it really depends on what your values are and like what wealth is to you wealth to me isn't really money it's kind of health and happiness and it will always be that so your money's really really important and let's not get around that but i i've, I've lost my stepdad these things happen in life that's part of, that's part of life but you soon, as you get older, I think you understand that wealth isn't found in money and in stuff like that. It's found in the people you have around you, the fun you have, and the health you have. Um, and I think, and I'm glad that I have that perspective. And yeah, that will probably stop me being the richest man on earth, and that will probably stop me being the best businessman on earth. But if I'm happy, I'll settle for that every day of the week. Love it. That's, that's, it's just so great to have people on that uh, are doing so great and that are so like down to earth and realistic about what they are doing. What are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so you guys have talked a little bit about how you, you've considered like pursuing your own route of creating your own income that's a bit more of your control than having, you know, other brands come to you. So I'd love you to talk a little bit more about that. Who are the people that you are helping in your coaching programs because you're, you're launching your own stuff on the side, yeah. kind of one-on-one -on -one stuff. But you've got some other stuff as well. Please tell us more for the for the audience. Do you want to do it, Jim? Yeah. So all of our our online co clients are basically our audience. Um, none of them none of them are like people that we just used to train or anything like that. Friends and family and all that kind of stuff. They are essentially just clients. And who imagine like our value. Yeah. Who like what we do and how we do it. Most of our clients in the as soon as we put it up, we did an Instagram live. We basically just said, look, guys, we're going to open up a limited number of spaces to online coaching we get our, we've been asked every at least 10 times a day for the last four years to do it you know people are always asking us can can i be coached by you your personal trainers your nutritionists but you're not coaching you know and, it, and it's one of those things where you go into expos and you're talking at these expos and people are doing interviews with you and stuff and it's a point where we're like we're personal trainers and we're talking about with our clients but these are all clients from like two three years ago and it's just stupid you know it's something that we really enjoy is coaching and we haven't been able to do it. Well, we haven't, we have been, but we just didn't use our time as effectively as True. we should. Um, so we just turned around and said, guys, we're going to open up some spaces. If you want to know more, pop us over an email to this email address. We'll send you the options. We had, we came up with this idea of gold, silver and bronze packaging, depending on how much contact they wanted and what whether they wanted. Training, whether it was training, nutrition, yeah, whether it was just nutrition. Whether it, whether it was both and whether it was Skype calls and all that kind of stuff. 
um, just threw it out there. We'd already set it all up in our own mind at the back in the background. We set up Fitbot and had a play with that, set ourselves up as clients so we knew how clients could see it on the other side, made sure that we kind of filled all the basic holes, usual parkour, all the legal and liability stuff out the way. And then, yeah, it just went nuts and people were like, great, get me involved. And ever since then, it's just been, it's been it's phenomenal. A steady, it's a steady influx and outflux, mm-hmm. as you'd expect. And like what we said to people is like, not everyone's ready. Like to say that everyone we coach comes in and gets perfect results, they don't. Like no no trainers, but no one's clients do because everyone are in different stages in, in, in their kind of development. And sometimes you can't drag a horse to water. People just aren't always ready. Yeah. Um, but well, we, we we've, had, we've, we've had really, really awesome results. And I think, I think the thing is, is that again, it's a reflection of Leon and I. So the people who that like the way we do stuff and we're not just focused on looking like a cover model. A lot of stuff we do is about having real achievable goals and perspective and and maybe pulling people away from what they expect because of what they see on magazines and show them what's realistic. We can still have great bodies, we can still have fun, but do you really want to have the sacrifices that come with that body all the time? And often than not, the answers are no. Um, and, and I guess, and that, that's a lot of, our, that's that's kind of a wholesome way that we that we treat our lives and, and everyone else's. We want people, everyone has different goals, obviously, but most people, they want to be able to still enjoy the foods that they like. They want to not have tons of pressure uh, and they just want to find a way that they can live that keeps them in in decent shape like i don't want to work with athletes that's never that's never been my goal athletes have most of their stuff figured out like and it's all about their sport i want to work with real people that have real life problems people that um people that have maybe i wouldn't say anxiety and stuff like that because that's not something i can work with but people have confidence issues and things like that you can help from it's not even the program it's how you talk to people and it's how you listen as a coach i think the most important thing you can do is ask people why and get them to figure stuff out from themselves because no one else is questioning them and they're probably not questioning themselves and it's in like a negative spiral so if you can get them into a positive mindset and you can ask them well why do you think you do this and that's when the magic happens like the most amazing things that i found out about myself have been when people are questioning me why i've done that and i'll be like um, um and normally you come up with an answer and you think it's the truth and you blindly think it's the truth, but it's not. It's the mechanisms that you come up to make that valid. When you look at it from, <clears throat> if it was Leon doing the same thing, oh, well, that's backwards. Why would you do it that way? But it's just the way your beliefs are set up because most of our belief systems in our body are set up from the age of like before we're, and up until we're about 14. That's so that's why my things and my money comes from my mum because of the, because of how I brought, how I was brought up. If I was brought up with a family that had was wealthy and stuff like that, then I probably wouldn't have that. Do you see what I mean? And we still make decisions with that brain from back there and the things that we come up with. So that's why I've worked with someone. Um, I sent my partner to work with someone in the past for some issues that she had, and it was amazing. And she said, "Oh, John, I really think you should go." I was like, "Well." I've not got anything to talk about. She's like, I think it would make your life a lot easier. You wouldn't procrastinate so much. Best thing I ever did. I didn't realize what a selfish bastard I was to her. Like I always put like what I was doing and work first. And for my happiness, it's the best thing I've ever done. So if I've got clients that are feeling anxious and stuff like that, I can't give them advice on stuff like that because I can't work with mental health. But what I can say is that I worked with someone, this is my experience, and it was the best thing I ever did. I think if you get to a point where you feel confident enough to do that, then it's definitely something that you should think about. Yeah, I think the two other things that we said when we set up the business, the two main things with the online coaching that we wanted to do, which was, again, drawing from some of the mistakes that I made as a coach when I was younger, I spent a lot more time making people feel comfortable and making their sessions easy, whereby, you know, they're coming in from a long day at work. I would get them warmed up. I would be changing their weights. I would be giving them the bars, giving them everything they need. So they didn't have to have a single education-based thought process at all in those sessions. So I used to wonder sometimes when my clients would go and then they'd come back six months later. I'm like, well, that's not me being a good personal trainer if they're coming back again. And I always used to wonder what, what the missing link was. And the main thing that we do, which I'm really proud of with the clients, is the first thing, before they spend any money, or sign to any contract, we give them a park you and a lifestyle form. And we say to them, there's just red flags and certain things. We're going to have a look at through, through this and we don't take everyone on. Not every single person who comes in with an email asking us to be their coach is going to get a, is going to become a client because 
Some people, like John said, aren't ready. Some people have got conditions we don't want to work with or we just might not be the right person for them. And there's nothing wrong with that as a good coach. And then also as well, like some of my clients now, they all get homework and they're like, you're my personal trainer and nutritionist. You're not my teacher. But every single client who comes to me on a package whereby we do Skype calls and everything like that, they go, they will leave my care as a coach knowing how to set up their calories or their basic TDE for their needs and their training goals. They will know how to lose weight. They will know how to maintain weight and they will know how to build muscle. They will know what all of their major macronutrients are, are for and how to get them in and what numbers and how to calculate them for the rest of their life. And I'm like, that's an investment that you're making in yourself that you might do this personal training coaching thing for the next six months, but you will never have to invest in that again, as long as you're, you know, you don't lose a leg or something crazy happens and all the rest of it, you'll never really need. And that's invaluable education for clients. And that's one of the biggest things that I'm super proud of the way that we do it is we're not just trying to take money off people, give them a program, a basic meal plan. Here you go. See you later. I'll see you again in 12 weeks time. Yeah. You know, and that's where that's where the beauty is with the coaching. And I that's think, what I like. I think we've got about because we don't like to give people the time that we want to give them. We can't take on too many people. I think we've got about. Well, I think I'm on 15. You're on 15, aren't you? I'm yeah, like, it's about 16. I won't. Well, I won't be taking on any more than that really anytime soon because uh, at the moment I have time to make sure I look after everyone and I try to speak to people most days whether it's just hey how's your day going just as a general chit chat as a, as a kind of just to build rapport with people like that I think that's and this is something I actually got from Leon whether he knew, he knew it or not when he was in the uh when he was in the gym PT and people was like even if someone's doing bench press, he'd take them on a treadmill for 10 minutes. And I was like, that's got relevant to do with a warm up for a bench press. But what you're doing for that first 10 minutes is you're building rapport. Someone's getting all that crap out from their day because, believe it or not, when you're a trainer, you're as much someone's kind of verbal punching bag for the first 10 minutes of that session. And when they've let everything go, then you get on with your session, you can build them back up again. And a lot of personal training, that's what people come and see you for. You will have clients that you train for a long time and they don't really make the progress that you probably want them to make. And that's simply because they're not really that bothered about making that. But to be honest, they want to come in. They like training with you. It's fun for them to work out and have someone else tell them what to do. And they get to get stuff off their chest at the same time. And it's your job as a coach to say, is that someone you want to train or is that someone you don't want to train? And, and, I'm down for that. Do you know what I mean? If, if, if I'm helping people, it's not always some of the best transformations I've had with people haven't come from what's happened to them physically. It's become to how they feel. And like I had one client for a long time who I, I absolutely adore. She's amazing. I don't train anymore because I left the gym, but we were losing weight. It would come on again. She'd lose weight, come on again. And I kind of knew she was lonely and I didn't see her for a while. And she came back to train with me and she looked amazing. And what all that had changed was that she'd found a partner. And but she had tied finding that partner to her getting uh, in good shape. And she'd done that out of a, a kind of pressure. Like, I need to do this for, to be accepted. Well, then once she was accepted for who she was, it then became in her power to go, do you know what? Now I'm ready to do it. And I, and I don't mind. I'm happy for that. Like the fact that she found someone that was, was awesome to me. And it's you can't just look like we know calories in calories out. It's really important, but it's not as black and white as that. There's so many different facets to someone's life and everyone's is different that made them in the position that they are in now. And it's like a puzzle and you can't always do it, but it's like a puzzle to help them find, let's say more advantageous kind of ways of thinking and ways of doing things. Wow. Guys, I'm going to bring this one to a close because I think we've gone through so much amazing stuff and I can sum it up in three little words or three little sentences from what I've heard you guys speak about. And that's be yourself, maintain integrity and stay humble. I think those three things in everything you've just spoke about today from business, family, relationships, clients, I think those three things sing, sing true across all of it. And I think both George and I are so grateful for having you on this show. And I think the audience are going to benefit as well. It's a completely different angle to what we normally have. It's normally much more numbers, business, this kind of stuff. Yeah, so no, we, we just went off on <laughs> You made the mistake of having us on just after we had a coffee. And, uh... <laughs> but it, it's, it's so refreshing to hear and to hear how your journey is sort of evolving step by step. And you've obviously got, you're starting to build families now, which is awesome as well. Um, so thank you so much for coming on the show. I know we'll have everything in the show links, but how do the guys get hold of you? What should they be looking out for in the future? What sort of, where do they go? 
So to find us on every platform, it's The Lean Machines. Uh, apart from Instagram, because somebody stole our name, it's The Lean Machines Official. They got there before us. Um, and look out, we've got the main thing at the moment is our, obviously our online coaching. Um, our Lean for Life Volume 1 guide is out there now, which people are absolutely flying to. And they're coming into the Facebook page and we're creating a nice little community on there, which is fantastic. The future is going to be all about that dad bod and babies and all the rest of it and how to navigate that 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 baby and dad relationship and training relationship because again being a bit of a a heads kind of person is something I, we were at an expo SFN expo last weekend and I've and one thing that I've stated maybe I've said it naively a little bit prematurely I might change my tone I never know but one thing that I will insist not to give into is be one of those guys that says I've lost the shape that I'm in because I've had a kid, you know, and I've heard that way too many times. I'm like, you can't put that on a baby. You know, yes, it's going to be sleepless nights. Yes, it's going to be a hard routine, but I'm going to be, I'm stating it right here on the podcast. I'm going to, I'm going to be that guy and I'm probably going to end up in the best shape I've ever been in in my life whilst having a child and whilst navigating that and going through that journey. And that's one of the biggest things that I think is going to be fantastic for helping a lot of our community as well. Cause there's a lot of dads and a lot of mums out there who don't have a lot of time and we just want to show them how then it, and that it can be done because I think it's about time we got rid of that whole, my, oh, my whole fitness life fell apart cause I had children, you know, that's, that's just not the case anymore. So that's going to be fun. Awesome guys. And the final question, which I'm so excited to hear the answer on, and that is what does freedom mean to you? Cool. Oh, no. I think freedom to me means to be able to be yourself without any um, judgments cast upon you, without feeling insecure what people think of you. I think it's to be 100% yourself and be free from judgment. I think freedom to me, the, the easiest way to describe it is that is to live your life every single day as if you're on holiday. That's free. When you're, when you're on holiday, you let your inhibitions go. You try new things. You spend more time with the people that you love. You feel like you fall in love with your partner again. You, don't, you didn't fall in love with your partner because you're on holiday and it's a nice sandy beach. You fell in love because you left all the crap at home. And you, you, know, and you, can, and you can still live that life when you're not on holiday. So my, my definition of freedom is just is, it's that holiday feeling every day of the week. And that's how I choose to live my life. Okay. Guys, incredible episode. Incredible episode. Thank you so much for coming on, guys. We'll get this shared out with everyone. And uh, as, as we said, guys, if you are listening, follow the Lean Machines and the Lean Machines official on Instagram. How, how dare they? <laughs> how dare they take the name? But give the guys a follow. I'm excited to see what you guys are doing, especially next year into 2019 when we've got the little ones on the way. It's going to be epic. You guys are going to keep evolving. You're going to keep crushing it as well. So thanks again, guys. And we'll see you shortly. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate you, guys. Thanks for listening to the Remote Revolution Show. If you enjoyed the show, please head across to iTunes, YouTube, and our other social media platforms to leave us a quick rating and review. And if you'd like your questions answering, we'd love to hear from you. So please send them into info at remoterevolutionshow.com. And please remember the show is all about growing the remote revolution. So if you wish to join the community and scale your business, then please head over to www.remoterevolutionshow.com or click the link in the show notes to grab our free download. Yes, seriously, don't be lazy. Click the link in the show notes and grab the downloads. And as always, we'll see you next week.